So in the last video, we talked about constructors and initializer blocks. And in this video, I want to go over how to create getters and setters. And these are actually more popular in Java because in Kotlin, it automatically generates them for you when you try to access a property value. But we're just going to jump right into it by creating a new class. And this is going to be a class called person. And inside person, we will create a variable of name and it's going to be of type string, which we can assign to default value in case nothing is given. And usually the way you would create a getter setter is immediately under the variable name you want to get and set the name for, you would type in the keyword get followed by fields. And this would be enough to retrieve this field when you are accessing it. And to set a value for this field, you would just call set and you would type in value. And inside here, you would write field equals value. Now in Kotlin, all of this is not necessary. So it is just essentially extra boilerplate code if you do decide to write it. But for now, I'm just going to go to our main function and instantiate our person. So we're gonna do value person equals person. And then to change the name of the person, we will go ahead and type person dot name, and we can equal that to Tom. And then right under, we will write print line person dot name. So right here, we are setting the value and right here, we are getting the value. And when we go ahead and click on run, you will see that it outputs the name Tom. But now that we covered the basic usage of the getters and setters, we're going to move ahead onto a more complicated example. And let's just get rid of everything we've written here. So the first thing we're going to do down here is create a class named guy. And inside here, we will create a variable called age, and it will be of type int, and we will assign to it the value of zero. The first thing we're going to add down here is a getter. So we're going to write get, we can actually expand that by adding a pair of curly brackets. And inside here, we are going to write print line age has been accessed. And we want to return the field because it is required. And then for the setter, we're going to write set and as usual value, and we are going to add some curly brackets as well. And inside here, we will write field is equal to when value is less than 18, we are going to assign it 18. When the value is in the range of 18 to 30, we will assign the value of value to it. Else we are going to return the value minus three. And we are also going to add a print line statement to show where we have used the setter. So we'll write angle brackets and age has been set. And at the bottom, we want to write the actual age. So we'll write actual age equals zero. And after we have created this very basic class, we can go ahead to our main function. And the first thing we're going to do is instantiate guy a couple of times. So we'll go value James is a guy. So we will instantiate that and we'll do James dot actual age is going to be 15. And then we'll write James age is also 15. And then we will print line a couple of statements, which actually I will copy and paste from the previous example. So we'll have a print line that says James actual age, which takes the James actual age value and inserts it here. And then we'll have a print line statement that says James pretended age, which will take the James age and it will put the value in here. So what's happening here is this is the actual age, which will just return itself. But once we set the age here, it will go through this field here and it will return the value based on which value we input. So if we input a value under than 18, it's going to return the value of 18. If we put a value between 18 and 30, it will return whatever value we've inserted. Otherwise, if the value is anything that's none of these two, it will put that value in and it will subtract three from it. So we can actually go ahead and click on play. And you'll see the first thing that happens is it will say that the age has been set because we have accessed the setter property here and we have set the age. Then it will say the actual age, which is the next print line statement down here. And then it will say the age has been accessed. That's because we have inserted it here and it had to get the age in order to use it. So it first will print this statement and then it will print the whole print line statement. And we can actually create one more random figure. So we'll go in here and we'll write Peter, and then we will change all of these to Peter as well, with the only difference being the age. So we will write 35 here and 35 here. And it's very good if we create a divider. So we'll do print line, use our favorite escape N, and then add three hyphens. But let's click on play. So here you will see that we have instantiated Peter as another guy. Ah, actually I forgot to change these. So we instantiated Peter as another guy and Peter's actual age is 35. 
and Peter's age that we set it to will be also 35. So the first thing that's going to happen, it's going to state that we have set the age of Peter because we use the setter to set the age. And it will also print this print line statement because it's part of the setter. So age has been set, Peter's actual age is 35. And then we will try to use that age over here. So it will say age has been accessed because we are using the getter to get that age. And because it is more than 30, it will subtract three from it and it will say Peter's pretended age is 32. And those were the basics of using getters and setters in Kotlin. In most case scenarios, you will never have to use them because if you just create var age and you try to change it, Kotlin will generate all the getters and setters for you. So you can just change the age comfortably. And actually that was a bad example because I didn't change the values. But if we change this to 40 and we change this to 50, you will see that it will print the actual age of 35 and Peter's pretended age of 50 because this calls both the setter and the getter under the hood. So that's another nice thing in Kotlin. It reduces a lot of boilerplate code when it comes to getters and setters. But that's all I wanted to go over in this getter and setter video. In the next video, we'll be going over inheritance and how that works in Kotlin. But uh, for now, I will see you guys in the next video.